Some believe that before the universe, there was nothing. They're wrong. There was darkness. And it has survived. The adventures of Thor continue as he battles to save Earth and all the Nine Realms from a shadowy enemy that predates the universe itself. In the aftermath of Marvel's Thor and Marvel's The Avengers, Thor fights to restore order across the cosmos, but an ancient race led by the vengeful Malekith returns to plunge the universe back into darkness. Faced with an enemy that even Odin and Asgard cannot withstand, Thor must embark on his most perilous and personal journey yet, one that will reunite him with Jane Foster and force him to sacrifice everything to save us all. This is probably the dorkiest superhero movie ever made. Norse gods battle elves armed with laser guns. The final fight sees heroes and villains alike literally jumping between dimensions as they do. It's crazy and it's nutty, but above all, it's a blast. Like the first Thor, this is a very funny movie filled with very charming actors, but unlike his predecessor, the action is terrific and the scope is huge. This is, in my opinion, one of the best superhero movies of 2013. The visuals are stunning, the shots are great, and overall, it's wonderfully directed. The effects in this movie were good, though there is one location in the movie where the green screen looks a bit weird. Hint, it involves them being on another planet. As usual, in most Marvel movies, the acting was good and the characters were memorable. Though I do have to admit that what carried this film was Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Sure, Natalie Portman and Chris Hemsworth were great, but Loki is like Marvel's Heath Legends. He's just brilliant. Fun fact, he originally auditioned for Thor. Chris Hemsworth brilliantly portrays Thor in this movie. You really believe the character and his anguish when shit starts to go down. In this film, Thor is basically Superman. I mean, in Man of Steel you have Superman. And then in this movie, you have Superman. He risks his friends, family and loved ones to protect the rest of the universe. Now, I like Man of Steel, but Superman didn't really feel like Superman when he was destroying buildings and probably getting people killed. But we can talk about that in another review. Natalie Portman as Jane Foster worked. Her chemistry with Hemsworth was great, and just like in the first film, her awe at this new world was joyful. To be honest, there isn't much more to add. She's a memorable character, and you do really like her. Then there's Malekith, the Dark Elf, played by Christopher Eccleston. Of course, I am a major Doctor Who fan, so when I heard the news of him playing Malekith, I was pleasantly surprised. But the movie left me disappointed. Apparently, there's a lot more to his character, but not all the scenes were cut because of reasons I'm not sure about. So what could have been a really well-rounded, interesting character became a two-dimensional I want to rule the world because I'm evil villain. Chris Eccleston did a good job, but I feel like a lot of the scenes shouldn't have been cut. And in the end, there's Loki, one of the best characters in Marvel history. Well-rounded, well thought out, and overall just great. He's entertaining to watch, you want him to be in every scene, and in the scenes he's in, he just steals the show. The great thing about him is that, like Moriarty and Sherlock, you love him, and you hate him. You want him to be nice, because he's awesome, but you don't trust him at all. Oh, what a character. It's a good thing Hilson got the part, or the Thor franchise just wouldn't be the same. At the end of the day, this movie is a fun and enjoyable experience with some great effects, great characters and great directing. It's a good movie to watch if you want a nice superhero movie, but if you're looking for a film with a deep emotional meaning, then I'm afraid this isn't the movie for you.